Hey YouTubers, welcome back to another episode of Small Engines Questions and Answers for Friday, July 1st, 2011. The weather's been not too bad lately, but we've had a lot of rain earlier this week. So I've been pretty busy this week with lawnmowers that I've acquired through people. There's a funny looking thing here. This is pretty old, it's got an old 5 horsepower Briggs and Stratton in it. Just a small riding lawnmower. And the seat here comes down got the cover there right now so it's not completely down like it should but you get the idea and I've just had a youtuber send me all these craftsman tools here as a gift the other day I was kind of surprised about that I really like this ratchet with these features here this is really handy here you just push the knob and the socket falls off and you can switch directions just by flipping this switch here so he sent me a few pairs of small craftsman pliers some wrenches some socket holders these are very handy and just an assortment of sockets there. They're all craftsmen, which are good. So thanks again, it's very much appreciated. Also, I want to let you know that if you send me gifts through UPS, if the gift is over $60, they're gonna charge me some duty on that and some taxes. With the wrenches I just showed you, the value was over $60, so they tried to charge me $43 just to get it, and I said, no, I'm not paying for that because it's a gift. So I still ended up having to pay the tax, which was $9.55. So I'm just letting you know that if you send me gifts in the box, if each gift in the box is worth over $60, they're gonna charge me for that. But you can send me a box with three or four gifts, whatever, as long as each gift in the box is worth less than $60, then I'm not gonna pay any charges. I don't agree with it because you should be able to send any gift to anybody anywhere because it's not a commercial transaction. We shouldn't have to pay taxes on it, but that's the way it is. So I'm just letting everybody know just ask before you send stuff so that I don't end up paying charges when I get them. And I also want to thank all the other YouTubers who've also sent me monetary gifts. I really appreciate that as well. And a special thanks to Roger. Now a YouTuber told me he's starting a small engine business repair from home and he's just wondering what kind of tools should he start buying. I believe he's a younger guy so he's probably just starting out with his tool collection. What I recommend is buy yourself a full set of standard and metric sized wrenches like this. Make sure to buy a name brand like Craftsman or some other brand that is lifetime warranty. Buy yourself a full socket set that is lifetime warranty. I would recommend Craftsman if you're starting out because it's a lot more affordable than Snap-on or Matco. And also just like you see here, just buy assortments of everything you see that's on sale from Craftsman, but always buy stuff that's lifetime warranty. If you're buying pliers, I would recommend channel lock pliers because they're affordable and they're lifetime warranty. And when you work with them, they work really well in your hands. You'll need a set of Allen wrenches as well. You can buy them like this or in the screwdriver type. Buy yourself a huge assortment of screwdrivers and buy the lifetime warranty ones. You can start off with any toolbox to put your tools in. I could probably go on and on all day to tell you what tools you should get, but just buy a bit at a time because then you're not spending a whole lot of money all at once. And you'll see over the years that your collection is really going to grow. So if you make a bit of money, take a bit of that money and put it back in your business by buying a few tools every month. Next question is regarding steel grass trimmers, specifically the FS38. But the tip I'm going to show you today may also apply to many other models of steel grass trimmers. So here's the FS38 here. Sometimes people email me telling me that they've rebuilt the carburetor in their trimmer, replaced the primer bulb, and the thing still will not work good when they go to accelerate. Well, I've come into the same problem, and what I can tell you is that you have to make sure that the fuel lines here are really tight on the connectors on the carburetor. If you look under here as well, there's another connector down here, and a connector over here. So the line comes out of the fuel tank and then spreads into two hoses, that connect to the carburetor. And you can see them down here. Now what the problem is sometimes with these fuel lines is that where they connect on the carburetor it gets expanded here and what happens is the line is a bit loose on the connector and what happens is your carburetor is sucking in air and you can never adjust the carburetor properly and then when you go to accelerate it just dies out. And because it's a fitted line even if you snip the tip of the line and connect it back on it may still be loose. As you can see here, I've tied a few little tie wraps just to try it out to make sure that it was the fuel lines and in this case it solved the problem. So what I'm going to do now is order the new fuel line for this machine. My next question is regarding the carburetors on the small 3.5 horsepower Briggs & Stratton engines on lawnmowers. 
Some people have asked me why their primers don't work anymore on them. So I'm talking about the carbs on these mowers here with the Pulsa Prime. Here's another one here. In this example, if you push the primer and it doesn't really want to come back out like that, it does prime, you can feel the gas go in and it's stuck in there or really slow coming out. What you would need to do for this is replace the primer bulb. In some other cases, you may be pushing the primer, it does come back, but you don't feel any fuel at all going into the carburetor, even after you've made sure that the fuel tank is full. Some people have even cleaned the carburetor and done everything to it and it still will not prime. Well, the experience that I've had in that case is that I ended up replacing the carburetor. I had a carburetor do that one time and no matter what I tried to do with it, it would just not prime. I also made sure that the tube that goes in the fuel tank wasn't plugged. The little screen at the end is what I'm talking about. And even after that was okay, it was still not priming. So instead of wasting a whole day and many hours, I just replaced the carburetor with the used one that I had in my shop and it worked. Your mower is in good shape and these are good engines. It's very well worth putting a new carburetor or a used one. Usually you can find a good used carburetor for these mowers on eBay. Or if you go to yard sales, you may pick up a used mower for cheap and take the carb off and put it on yours. These are good little motors. So if your engine has no other problems, I would recommend that you spend a bit of money, put a new carburetor if that's the case, and then it's going to run like new again. Now in my last answer for today, sometimes I get questions from people asking me, why does the keyway keep breaking on my Briggs & Stratton motor? I'm talking about the small keyway that goes between the flywheel and the crankshaft here. And you can see the keyway right in there. One reason that your keyway may keep breaking is if you forget to put the small washer here before you put back on the starting clutch which tightens up the flywheel. I've personally made this mistake myself a few times and the only way to remedy that was to find the washer and put it back in. Sometimes you're in a hurry and you forget to put something back on, then you're wondering why am I having this trouble. You would also want to make sure that this is tight enough so that the flywheel will not come loose because if the flywheel comes loose, the keyway will break again. But having that little washer there makes all the difference in the tightening of the flywheel. So always make sure that you put back the washer there or else your flywheel key will break. Now you may not have a washer on every Briggs & Stratton motor that you get, but especially the older ones like this, they will have one. So if your engine originally came with a washer there, make sure it's on there if you remove the flywheel. So that'll be it for today's Small Engines questions and answers. So again, I want to thank everybody for watching. Thanks to all the new subscribers as well, and we'll see you next Friday.